This is Vet Tales, the story of the world's only sailing veterinary clinic. We have a mission to deliver veterinary care to remote areas in the Sea of Cortez, but we need your help. Visit www.chuffed.org forward slash project forward slash the sailing vet clinic to help us help animals. We're just lifting anchor in Chakala, getting ready to head back to Punta Mita today. We're hoping we may be able to sail a little bit. Five, six knots, that's underway. under sail we had to motor for the first two hours but the wind's just starting to pick up and we're hoping to have it for a couple of hours it's more or less a beam reach um, reach beam reach um, which is like a really nice point of sail we've been probably averaging around four knots and there's only like six knots of wind which is really good if just sailing at about 80 percent of the wind speed very good um, yeah and with any luck it'll only increase and we'll go a little faster and it's very peaceful. Other than the noise of the autopilot, it's like silence. What did you just do? Well, our autopilot is slowly digging a hole through the aluminium of the boat. So I've just tied this rope up to try and hold this up a little bit and we'll hope that it rubs a little less. We tried a rubber stopper but that didn't work. Eventually we need to actually like get some nylon that can go there to get worn through instead or find a way to permanently have the tiller further up but it's yeah, one of those things. And he's making this very difficult. Yeah, I can see you shaking. He's like on the strap. Like, oh my god, just my face. Push me here. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's good. under sail which is sweet um, it's fairly light wind still so we've got the sail relatively kind of balloony you can see our telltales for the most part are behaving every now and then they're acting like we've got it a little bit not close enough pulled in but the wind's kind of dying and coming so we're leaving it a little bit more ballooned for now um, we've been making between kind of four and four and a half knots with this slight increase in wind and it's meant to just be increasing, which is cool. It's been really, really nice to like um, be 
sailing because so much of what we've done has been motoring or motor sailing up until this point because it's just not been much wind but this area actually gets pretty consistent afternoon northerlies from the sea of cortez kind of shooting down that gulf into this direction and so we've actually been able to practice sailing more and it's really good because we're definitely learning some tricks with chuffed and you know uh for example it seems like chuff slows down as she heals more which which some you know some boats do but particularly if she gets a big heel on she actually slows down a little bit and by easing the main and bringing her just a little more upright we actually get more speed not less L little things like that we're kind of dialing her in so it's been fun it's been a really good trip a really good shakedown we've realized we need some things like the tiller needs something to stop it rubbing with the autopilot on we really need a new dinghy motor. Rowing is fine, but trying to set the stern anchor with a little rowboat and not having like the option to motor, I think we really need to try and find a dinghy motor. Um, and then the other thing is our stern anchor, way undersized. We set it really well last night and it held us for as long as it was acting as a secondary. But then when the wind came from behind us and I guess it kind of made it almost like the primary anchor, it, it just slowly, we swung, swung, swung. and. It was okay, nobody was too close to us, but in a tighter anchorage, it could, could have been bad. So uh, we need to look into getting a better stern anchor set up. So yeah, but that's what this is all about, right? These first few weeks is about us figuring out what Chuff needs and how to get her into tip top sailing shape again. But she's been performing so well. We haven't had to fix anything really, so that's nice. Anyway. Yeah, feels good. but you won't poop. You figured out the weeds. Good boy. Good boy, Addy. Bye, see you soon. You do. I'll have dinner ready for you when you get back. Nice. Watch your head, Addy. <laughs> Basically, when you have them on the drip, it's like flushing the system. And so when you take the drip away, the kidney enzymes are actually just get worse and worse. Go back to bed. is once again on anchor in Punta Mita. We're heading to shore and we're gonna go see an animal rescue center and drop off these guys. <laughs> we won't have a boat dog anymore. Wow. <laughs> Three persons and a dog. <laughs> it's hard to appreciate how close it is, but there's a whale like. Mm, how far are those? 100 meters? Yeah. Whoa! There's another one too. That's a big one. Bye, Bye my guys. darling. Hey, we see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. See ya, thank you. <laughs> Oh yeah, that looks like it goes to the beach.
We're at the Wet Noses Animal Rescue Centre, just giving the dogs a little bit of a check over, and we're going to be talking uh, to the guys who organise it here about what we can do to help and, um, yeah, help them with the medical stuff a bit. We just finished up at Wet Noses. Uh, it was really good to go and kind of go through everything, all the animals and a plan. Um, we gave a bunch of the dogs like just some quick checkovers, an initial checkover, um, and we got a bit of the stories behind each of the dogs, especially the ones that still have ongoing medical issues or behavioral issues. Um, and Pauline's going to give me access to their database so that I can look at all their veterinary history and their records um, to work out kind of where everybody's at. And basically the plan going forward is we're going to do some special one-on-one -on -one training with the dogs that are having behavioural issues. There's a couple of dogs that have um, what seems like a fear aggression where um, they are scared of people and then they can act aggressively. And there's one that's just pure scared. He doesn't seem to have any aggression, but he's really, really frightened. So he'll be, I think, very important to do some training work with to try and get him less scared of people. Um, and then we're going to look at giving a lot of the cats a check over because they're all pretty stable but they recently had a respiratory outbreak so we're just going to give everybody a good check over there's 70 cats so that'll take up some time um, and then there's a few dogs that have special medical cases that we're going to review and go over some extra treatments for them You're about a quarter of the way. <laughs> We spent some time reviewing medical files with the staff and discussing some of their more difficult cases. The next thing on the day's agenda was to check over the resident cats. Viral respiratory diseases in cats can have ongoing effects, including chronic gum disease. We helped the staff identify patients with ongoing symptoms so they could implement treatments. Next, we began work with Diesel, a very scared dog that wouldn't leave his kennel in the presence of humans. I began by simply playing with his roommate, Marla, to try and show him that I was a friendly well, person. I've definitely made one friend. But our other little girl is making a little more eye contact because she's really scared. So it's our third day here and we're just doing some training with the dogs. Mostly I'm trying to get closer to this dog Diesel who's really, really terrified. So it's going to be really slow going. Um, but yeah, we'll see how we go. Ultimately, it's also showing everybody else how we do the training so that they can continue after we've gone as well because dogs like Diesel are going to need a lot, a lot of training. Lots of barking. Hey Diesel, you don't have to be so scared my boy. Hey. Basically just talking a bunch and kind of catching the edge of the cage so he gets more and more used to my hand being near him. And we'll see if eventually he'll either take food from me or let me touch him, or maybe come out. So he's, he's relaxing a tiny bit, but it's very slow going. He's laying down now and he's a bit less scared. And he's making eye contact, and he's slightly less afraid. I think Diesel just ate one of the pieces of sausage, or he at least sniffed it, and he's now laying down. Doesn't sound like huge progress, but it's a sign that he's relaxing a little bit, so we'll see. On our fourth and final day working with the Wet Noses team, we focused on showing them how I approach training dogs with fear aggression. We worked on giving the dogs treat 
while somebody scary, aka Jim with the camera, approached them slowly, and we had very rapid results. We also reviewed a puppy that was walking strangely, and I determined that she had a hyperextended right hock. This can occur for a number of reasons, but it often responds to splinting and physiotherapy. This leg, uh huh, and then look at the other leg, the shape of them for, for his ankles. Yeah. <laughs> See, See, creo los ligamentos por aquí. Hey, mi amor, you? Can I touch his little footsies? What a good boy. What a good boy. She's just touching his little footings and look. Look what I have a guy yet. Oh, hold on, hold on. What a good boy. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Oh, she's playing. Oh, she's playing. Hey, she's playing. She's playing. Oh, 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 oh. Good boy, Diesel. He came out. Do you want to come play with us? You're going to go back in? That's okay. Good boy. What a good boy. What a good boy. That's a bit better, huh? He's not so scary. Oh, such a good boy. Such a good boy. That was some real progress with Diesel. He, you can tell he like loves to be pet, but he's also so terrified, the poor darling. But I think that's a really good sign that if the volunteers and staff here can just sit with him for 10 minutes a day and give him like loving, calm touches like that and then come out and sit with Marla for a few minutes and see if he comes out voluntarily like he did with us, I think give it a week and he'll be good. We really loved working with such an amazing and well-organized rescue center and I kept wondering how Deezer would go with additional training after we left. I recently got sent this amazing photo with a caption that said, Thank you, Dr. Shetty. So thank you to all of you too for helping make this happen. We lifted Anchor and Punta Vita to head back to the cruise to work with the Wildlife Centre. But little did we know the wildlife would find us first. If you'd like to help us provide veterinary care to animals throughout the Sea of Cortez, please visit our Chuff.org campaign. Until next episode, stay chuffed everybody.